<laughs> yeah, that's right. People haven't really heard my teacher voice. I'm saying this, but oh, let's hear it. You don't know how loud it could be. I, I choose not to use it. Okay, I, as always, I'm really happy to see people here. This is, remember, this is, you know, we call this Melissa's Garden, but this is not just Melissa's Garden. This is, this is a garden for any, there are other people whose ashes are laid to rest here, and other people who will be, and, and it belongs to all the members of the church, and, all, and our friends are always welcome to be here, family, so it's, belongs to everybody and most of you um, came over here and if you didn't you might still want to we ask people to write little messages either to Melissa or to anyone that that you've lost and are missing and remembering and we could put a little message on there and then people can walk around and read them um, two of them were decorated by our artist and resident Lynn, residents Linford and one by our other artist and residents <laughs> Jewel <laughs> who always helps out with things. So I was going to read two poems. I had trouble deciding. One is one of the very first ones I wrote. Not very polished, but um, sort of blunt in feeling. Um, there, there are a number that have to do with the garden is what I was choosing. Um, in fact, this is the fourth, the fourth time in the garden. So, um, so have I have poems from all all different times. Okay, this one is called um, Missing Melissa in Spring. What will we do when the azaleas bloom, he asked, and somehow, not having thought of it already, I felt a blow to my chest and fell to my knees, or thought I did. Maybe I only began to cry. Last April, perhaps to extend our happiness, the dogwoods, wisterias, and azaleas bloomed lavishly in succession, the azaleas peaking on her wedding weekend, a perfect pink backdrop to her pale, fragile loveliness. Should we, could we have seen, have guessed that the slight pulsing blue veins on her forehead hinted that like the dogwoods especially, she might be too fragile to last a year and that we would be soon, we would soon be picking up the fading, curling petals that, like our girl, might not bloom another spring they did. This year they all bloomed together. Too much beauty. The intense fragrance of wisteria twisting mistily about the pinkish dogwood, while profuse azaleas promised to return each year to torment with their lushness. Did she go where dying blossoms float? So that's, that's an old one. And, oh, okay. And here's a more recent travels in spring. Come sit in your garden with us, Melissa. We miss you, we need you, we feel you here. We sense your sweetness in the fragrance of the lilies in the vases by your marker. Hear your laughter in the wind chimes hanging from the shepherd's crook, where fuchsias tried but failed to thrive, and where we'll grow some cheerful purple pansies, hoping they may last all year. The tulips and the daffodils we planted in the fall may bloom while we're away but we'll take comfort in another year's profusion of azaleas, though the plants are old and gnarled. I know they'll stay for us till we return. Do dance with friends who joy in snowdrops. Save some love and warmth for us. And again, just thank you for being here with us. We really appreciate it. I mean, you know, friends and family are, are it. <laughs> that's how, that's how, well, and we're, friends and family to each other and that's how we survive and Tim you, you brought lilies I mean that's what I wrote in my poem and that's why you brought it, so that was nice okay, okay. Um, sign sign a message if you want to write a message and have some more to eat and talk and chat and take your time and we love you all oh and John John can read one thing do you want to read your people liked it he has to vault over the <laughs> this was a prayer that he wrote I think maybe for last fall and we liked it so much we saved thrust it at him to read again yeah it was very much a fall kind of uh, feeling okay you don't have to do it no, no go ahead. <laughs> but uh, it's nice to do it in the springtime because it sort of lifts things he's, he's, right. a, he's a man for all seasons right. um, anyway I think I, I what I did was take some words from 
uh, a hymn, an Advent hymn, and some words from a psalm. And then um, the last paragraph is a sort of a commendation um, of Melissa's life um, in a prayer kind of form. Anyway, I did this, I, I entitled it for Marty and Ira um, because I think at that particular point in uh, that aut particular autumn, it was weighing very heavy on them. So here's, here's what I wrote. How goes our dialogue with silence? It goes like this. Watchman, tell us of the night, what its signs of promise are. Traveler, wait, keep watch for light. Mourn the absence of your star. And how shall we, how shall our prayer break this silence with abject need? Out of the depths have I called to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. You press upon me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Where can I flee from your presence? <laughs> On this, and now I'm um, extemporizing because of the change of season on this an anniversary of Melissa's wedding we come together with one another and we come to you O Lord seeking solace from our grief transform our flesh and blood release us bless and heal our memories warm our chill speed the dawn send our roots rain only reluctantly but with no other choice do we commend into your hands O Lord Melissa we commend the treasure of this singular life this beautiful spirit remember her according to the favor which you bear to all your children make us we beseech you deeply sensible of the shortness and uncertainty of life Help us to go from strength to strength in the service of your kingdom, walking in the path of hope and patience and love. Amen. Amen. Okay. Thank you very much. Just take your time and relax. Eat.